Good afternoon. Welcome to SMTV Live. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Duncan Gilman. And I'm Brandy Powers. And what kind of start of the month would it be if we didn't have a Facebook change for you? Right. Happy November. Happy November. <laughs> Facebook's going to change. Well, potentially. Potentially. Several articles out there, one from Mashable, one from LA Times, uh -huh. all the big news sources, are, have a, a potential screenshot for the new timeline look, which I'm very optimistic about because it has everything in one column. Yes. Rather than, here, I'll click over to a current timeline. Rather than this back and forth, kind of hopping back and forth across the vertical line here, yeah. that is a little bit confusing. Very confusing, actually. And if this happens before the end of 2012, it would actually be the second new rollout of the year. So I know that there was a lot of backlash and fallout. People were like, oh, we don't want to change it. We don't like change. But, you know, sometimes change is good. So we'll see when and if the new rollout takes place. Right, and of course we'll keep you posted so that you know what to say when your phone rings dozens of times by your clients saying, Facebook changed, what, what do I do? do? Right. We will help you out because we're here to help you out with your social media campaigns or answer any questions you may have about Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube, or your blogs, or Pinterest, lots of stuff. Whatever Everything. it is that you're working on, just let us know. Email us your questions to questions at splashmediau.com, and you can always tweet us by using hashtag SMTVQuestions. Let's take some questions from our viewers. Joanne has a question for us. Joanne says, what's the best way to start getting engagement in Facebook? A great way to start getting engagement on Facebook is to post things that are already getting engaged. For instance, we're going to actually show you a screenshot right here. This is a photo of um, your top three, the first three things that you see is going to describe you. I use this on my personal profile. We use it on a lot of clients' profile. It's awesome. As you can see here, there's a lot of likes and shares that this particular post got. So to increase your engagement, you want to post things that are thought-provoking, things that are exciting, things that can be easily shared um, with everybody in your that's liking your page. So this is a great example. Yeah, I love it, especially if you're ha struggling to see engagement with your industry or your relevant posts, which are, are still important, right. post something fun like this. I mean, this got 52 shares, 46 right. comments on it. It was so much fun. And, it was, and it's just fun. And this is how you can get people into your community mm -hmm. and then keep them there because they're seeing stuff now and they'll continue to see your posts yeah, they'll check back. once they get involved. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, Carson wrote to ask and asked us, when will the new LinkedIn profile roll out for everybody? I don't know, Carson. I wish I did. I'm sorry. Because I want it too. I want the new LinkedIn profile. It looks really cool. Let me, in fact, let me open up the new um, profile here. There was a, um, a mention on the blog, mm -hmm. on the LinkedIn blog, of the new profile, which actually looks really nice. It does. You can scroll down to the screenshot of it here. You know, funny thing is it kind of reminds me of Google Plus a little bit. It does, with, especially it, with the circle. Yeah, with the circle here and the the, the blocky mm -hmm. look it has to it. But it looks really clean, really Very nice. Very clean. I was just getting ready to say that, yeah. Unfortun I like it. Unfortunately for Carson and for us, because we don't have it yet either, uh -huh. um, their update says... Over the next few months, Yes, right? over the next few months. Right. So that's a little bit vague. Very vague, <laughs> From actually. LinkedIn's, uh, on LinkedIn's part. So we don't know exactly when it's going to roll out, but... It's coming. We'll, Again, with the same thing with the Facebook timeline, we will definitely let you know. And it, it is coming because we LinkedIn has mentioned it on their blog officially. Absolutely. Next question is from Sam. Sam wants to know, should I customize my connection request message to everyone I try to connect with on LinkedIn? So we'll stick with LinkedIn here for a second. Yeah, we're on LinkedIn pretty hard yeah. today. And your answer to that question is yes. You should absolutely customize every single post. We revisited this um, a few months ago on the question. You want to make sure that you're sending individual connection requests, number one. So don't do a bulk connection request to send to everybody. But the second thing is utilize this time to ask for everything that you might want from this person. So besides just personalizing the request, if you want to request for engagement, excuse me, for an endorsement, or if you want to request a recommendation from this person, go ahead and throw that in the request at the same time so you can kill two birds with one stone and get everything that you want to get accomplished with that personal connection request. I think it's a great idea. I've got Larry here. Uh -huh. Larry, who I might want to connect with on right. my sample LinkedIn profile. And I noticed that we have a group in common. That's how I found his profile in the first place. Okay. So I, I said, uh, LinkedIn is asking me, how do I know Larry? I uh -huh. said group, so I'll choose the group. Let's say I want to connect with him because we are both talking about social media marketing. Right. It takes two seconds to go in and say, to change this and say here, you know, something like, I saw we had, and I'll say dot, 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 I saw we had uh, the social media marketing group in common. Right. Or both members of this group would love to connect with you sincerely, whoever, and this is our sample yes, account Yes, so here. I'm glad that you're showing this on the screen. Make sure you take out that generic canned 
message that's in there. Everybody just, knows it's yeah. default message, so right. definitely personalize your, your connection request. Especially if you haven't actually physically face-to-face -face met the person, if right. you just met through a, a common um, connection or through a, a meeting Group. that was like a, a conference or something where oh, the right. person might not remember you, it helps to customize this so and that they don't... specify where. Right, so they don't click, I don't know this person. Right. Yeah. You look like a stalker too. You do. Well, and and, and LinkedIn will catch you on it. If, yes. if you have too many people who click... That they don't know you. they don't know you, right. yeah, then you, Very then good you point. can get in trouble. Don't get in trouble. Don't get in trouble. Daryl wants to know, how often should I clean out my Twitter follower list? Every two weeks. That's about how often I would do it because you don't want to be clicking follow and unfollow, follow, unfollow too often because then it looks like you're trying to game the system. So I think every mm -hmm. two weeks is a nice in-between number that lets you gather up your follows and uh -huh. give them a chance to follow you back. That's the most important. Give them a chance because right. not everybody's checking that very often like they should be. So definitely give them a few weeks to get in there, see who you are, and see if they want to follow you back. That's going to do it for today. Thank you for joining us this Thursday for our live broadcast of SMTV. Keep those great social media questions coming in. For Splash Media, I'm Duncan Gilman. And I'm Brandi Powers. Thanks for being with us today.